this is such a weird situation. I don't know which video I mentioned this in yet, but this happened to my long wear lipstick. It is supposed to look like this, but it merely fell, not on anything terribly hard. And it just broke wide open. And when we know I don't like waste, so I did my best to pour it into this one and I got a good amount in there, but it was just a lot spilled on the floor. And thankfully I was able to get that up with Neutrogena soap. Well, I just wiped it up first. Then the remnants I got up with the soap, thankfully, before, you know, I didn't want to have to take rubbing alcohol to it or something, but it was a stressful moment. And especially as I was just getting on the phone with someone who I was going to be getting recording with. And then, I mean, I've just, I've never seen anything like this. And now that I think of it, I haven't yet found where the rest of this went. So I may need to hunt for that to make sure I didn't splash elsewhere. And usually this lasts all day. I did just eat something oily, but I had this lip gloss on, which is supposedly compatible. And it started coming off after I ate though. It didn't seem to, and, and in past times it did this one. It didn't seem to, no, not that one. Well, that same one, just different color. This one, um, it had, seemed to not affect the lip stuff as long as I didn't eat. So I'm, I'm guessing it was the oily stuff I ate, but I thought the lip gloss protects so that you, you can eat oily stuff and then maybe blot your lips and do have more of the lip gloss. So I don't know what to make of that. I think more experimentation is needed, but I want to see, I, as much as I poured some out, there may still be some and it may not be dried up yet. So if that's the case, I'd like to try and get the little bit that's left in there out. I do see some like here, at least it's showing it even if I disagree. Okay, yes, I do see some. So, okay, this is more than enough to try putting on. I used witch hazel to get clean my lips. Oh, a chunk just good. And this is the one where you put on three thin coats. And then ideally you shred your lips a little so it doesn't go like, it doesn't get too tight and you have Chance to let it dry without sticking. So going back into that puddle of it that's left kind of around this rim here, reloading the DOF applicator. I mean, this is the end of the day. I don't need it to last at this point, but somehow I feel vindicated getting the rest of this up. and not having the waste anymore. I mean, that is very bright. I like to tone it down with the gloss. Is there any more? Yeah, I think there is. And the thing is you lightly lips touch and they stick. So that's not ideal. So what else can we discuss? All right, I'm gonna be trying, even though I already have some blush on from earlier, I did a touch up because you know I blow my nose a lot. And so some came off from there. I added some mineral to even that back out. And this is the Tarte blush, Amazonian blush, 1.5 grams. It's pretty small, but it you know came free with one of the little things. Does not have a mirror, don't really need one, wouldn't really help in that size. But it's kind of a color, to me, it's more like a bronzer. It's brownish orange. I don't see how that's gonna do much for me, but we're gonna try it. And if nothing else, maybe it will be a bronzer. I find it to be kind of on the orange side for me. It's not coming through the camera the way it looks in real life. It's darker in real life. More, I don't know that I'd call it a pinky orange. I had to photograph it and it still didn't come out the same color. Oh, the good thing is putting this in front of the light has me able to see. It's it this this stuff ends up a lot more gelatinous than I would have expected. And again, 
end of the day, I don't actually need the lasting power. But considering how quickly it came off, it'll help me to see, is it the lip gloss or was it what I ate? I think we've achieved relative evenness. Close enough. Especially for just hanging out. And yeah, I would say the majority looks to be used up. There's a little bit there on the bottom here, I think. But overall, I feel fairly, succe fairly successful in using up the rest. What I could do if I really, really want, I might put some saran wrap on here to see if I can keep it moist overnight or perhaps a little bit of alcohol. But I don't know if rubbing alcohol would work because it might just be regular alcohol based. Ah, okay. So is it blush time? Let me use the recent Believe Beauty blush brush I have. There's a little pink on here, but it's from a very not strong pink. So I'm gonna rub it off here and I'm not even seeing much come off. So here we go. Definitely flicks off. You probably can't see the powder, but the powder is just flying into the air. So this might be one to tap. Oh, do I like this more than I thought? Do I notice a difference? Huh, I don't know. It still seems a little bronzery to me. Like, do, does this to me seem like blush? Or does it look like dirt on my face? I think it's coming out okay on the camera. The weird thing is I find blush shows up so much more on the camera than it does in real life. I don't know what the deal is with that. Like to me, it will look very, very light in person, but on the camera, some of the blushes, especially the more liquid or cream ones show up like a blended an airbrush stripe, you know? I don't know if this is mixing with the pink. I, mean, I would think with a the freebie, they're trying to make a more universal color because they want people to fall in love with the formula perhaps. And therefore, if it's a free sample, you get, it'd have to be more universal. So I don't know. It's like a tiny bit of a dirt feeling, but is that just because I'm used to certain blush colors? Like, does, is there anything about this that actually looks like a natural color? I'm not convinced yet. I'm not sure. But in the camera, at least, I mean, hey, even if it's just for the camera, much better than I thought. I think I'm just gonna go right in with this lip gloss as an experiment, because normally I would do the actual official gloss with it first. Uh-oh, it's picking up any color. As kind of a base, but that often can wear off anyway. So here, I'm just trying it directly over end of the day, I don't need it to last. What if it's not gonna last? I'd rather know while I'm at home than out in the wild needing it to last. And it's interesting how this changes the color and how I do like it. I kind of like to load up the gloss more too because I feel like this is one where the more you put on, the more shiny it looks. Whereas with others, it looks quite shiny right off the bat. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't, didn't pick up any color. I like the feeling of the gloss, like kind of on the hand. I don't know if people call this sticky. To me, I call it kind of creamy, but like, yeah, it, it definitely is very grippy. Like you definitely feel increased friction, like almost like when you have a silicone gripper or a tub mat or something. But when you spread it out, it's not that shiny. Well, there's a, caught it for a second. There we go. Catches the light just ever so slightly, but not at all. I like this kind more than like the more oily kinds. I, I, maybe the, I don't know. Is it possible to have not oily, but still very shiny? I'm not sure. But it feels like, you know, a good hand lotion if I want to rub it in that way. What to myself, what kind of eyeshadow look am I going to do today? I love the Natasha palette. It's become kind of an instant favorite, both in the pastel realm and just in general, because I love bright colors, but I don't like dark bright colors. And being as late as I am, pastel is bright, almost neon to me. So I obviously haven't used the Bellini very much, the orange, 
and the star lit only a little bit for a look that was on some kind of demonstration. And I don't even know if the Bellini has been, no, the Bellini must've been used a tiny bit for some demonstration, but Brisk and Minute Frost, I also haven't used much, but I don't think those would really go with Bellini. So if I wanna try the more blue look, where did I go? <laughs> I think I would need to stick with the Brisk and Mint Frost perhaps. Yeah, I thought about doing the Bellini. Well, no, the thing, it's like the Bellini, I might not like it. And so then it works better to just be done and wash off. Whereas the greens, I'm more likely to like. So that is a safer risk for the daytime. All right, I'm gonna stick with the original plan, go with Bellini. I think I'm gonna start with this brush. That's, I don't know if it had pink on it originally or if that's stained, but it is clean. So Bellini orange. Do I want to put, uh, well, I've got some creasing of the, uh, what's it called, foundation here. But here's one thing I want to try. Eyeshadow base as this. If it doesn't work, I can wash it off very quickly. So I put like one swipe, I'm gonna pick it up with my finger, put, transfer to the other finger. It feels like it don't, doesn't take much. Now granted, I feel like my eyes are preparing themselves already. Or is that just because I just put a brush on them? I don't know. So I'm gonna start in the inner corner. It's very, like I could see this easily lifting the foundation. I'm trying to put an even layer. Now, obviously because I've been recording already today, I do have mascara on already. Now I'm bringing it up and out a little bit because I like the most color there. And so bringing it up and out, I'm not seeing too much movement in the foundation yet. Although there is definitely some foundation on the fingertips. So bringing this up and out, surprised I haven't seen this more often, but we're trying it. And how much foundation, yeah, not a ton of foundation came off onto the fingers. So now back into the Bellini. I didn't see it show up a lot, already. I'm just tapping into the pan. I almost feel like now I need to pat it in first. All right, I'm gonna pat that side. I'm gonna swipe this side. And of course the fibers or the filaments are getting caught on the skin because it is so grippy, but it's still blending okay. I just kind of felt like, is it gonna deposit color better almost using this like to set it and then blend. Yeah, that feels like it's sticking less. This is just so peculiar and why is it not more common? Okay, so we did Bellini. I guess, well, let's go with tool more for the eyelid. I forget how bubble gum of a pink it is. It looks a little bit more I don't know what the word is, not mauve, but like a darker pink in the pan, then it comes out more of a bubblegum pink, which I like. And that, that does play well with the Bellini, that's for sure. Now I'm gonna go back into the Bellini. Maybe bring it up a little bit. Man, her colors just get cuter and cuter. All right, so how is Feather different from Bellini in this case? Feather, or then Tool, I mean. Okay, so Tool is darker. Feather is lighter on the skin. So we've got orange and pink. Have I used these at all yet? No, I can't remember. For like a separate look. I mean, it only makes sense to go with Starlet. This looks like a brush that's had pink on it. Seems like Illusion has chunked off into Starlet. All right, am I gonna start in the middle? Yeah, okay. Starting in the middle, swooping it out. Hmm. Here, I think this is a duochrome. Did I get myself a little code? Yeah, the underlined ones means duochrome. So starting on the outside, sweeping it out. It ends up more pink. Like in the pan, it looks very like a brick red. But on the lid, somehow it's more pink, which I like. Is that even even? I 
I can't even remember how far I went out with the sticky stuff. Yeah, we could we could have like a superhero fun look if we want. Hmm. So in the in the camera, it looks pretty dramatic. In real life, it's not even that pronounced. Oh, I think we're going to need something below. So let's go with the Bellini to start off on the underneath, which comparatively, I feel like hardly even shows up. And now, do I want to try this other thing? Yes, I think I do. I've got these tart things building up, some of which I bought, some of which are samples. This is the Shape Tape Glow Wand. I believe the color is a light, which looked like the lightest, but you know, I need lighter than the lightest. So it says three ways to wear. One, over concealer to brighten. Two, anywhere you normally highlight. Center of forehead, above cheekbones, Cupid's bow, or down center of nose, which sounds like regular highlighter. Three, alone for no makeup magic. What's that gonna do? <laughs> I mean, unless you've got some kind of perfect skin, it's based, I mean, the, the demonstrations seem to be primarily the first one. And the second one, again, are they trying to be highlighter? Is it just regular highlighter? Is it something like a more muted highlighter? Or are they just trying to give you other ways to do things? So this is a cute little sample. And I already have concealer in them set, but why not try it anyway? Or suppose we could try it as a highlighter on the cheeks first. Comes in on a tiny little doe foot. I don't know what to do here. I feel like I saw people putting it on their fingers. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thankfully it doesn't look as bad on the camera as it does in person. It does not work in person. So now we're gonna try it under the eyes. I cannot quite tell what the deal is. If it's just a shimmery instead of matte concealer, I don't know what to make of this. Um, which kind of brush do I wanna? I'll wash, this is my under eye setting brush. Do I have anything else nearby? Well, okay. Or does it have too much powder on it already? It's a problem. Should I have done it with my finger? I don't know. Um, maybe this doesn't work as well when it's already been set. I cannot tell what the deal is. Maybe I should just put it in my hand or arm. Okay, so it clearly has pigment. Is it like the tinted moisturizer version of concealer? I don't know. Or is there something reflective in here? Yeah, it's definitely having a hard time blending over the powder that's already here. But I think one of my thoughts was that it would make the under eye sticky enough to get the color to sit down. But uh, I feel like it's kind of a mess. But again, it's not too terrible on camera, except this line here. We're gonna do our best to continue. So back into Bellini for the under eye. Thinking I need to be extra careful now that this is not set. Kind of not even seeing the under eye much with this light orange. Okay, but I feel like it's, even though I'm not really seeing the color, it's doing something. Now I wanna go in with a tool to kind of get the top to match. And then Starlet. Guess we could call this some kind of wraparound effect, like a wraparound porch. Starlet, I'm not really clear how much pigment it really has. It seems like, the chunkiness of it makes it seem like it won't, but then it kind of does, but it's medium sheer. But are the matte ones that more, much more pigment? I don't know. Okay, so back into Starlet, outer half, blending somewhat. 
which feels like it's just going right over what's already there, but maybe because it is sheer, it's it's not eliminating it. It's just enhancing, maybe? I don't know. Again, this is looking pretty different in real life than on camera. So what color should we do on the inside? I mean, mint frost is right next to it, but that doesn't mean I think it's going to go well together. I can't say that I feel like any color is going to go especially well with it. But I do love purple. But then the mint frost. You know what? Let's just do the mint frost because I haven't done it much. That's a good enough reason. Try it on the hand first. Okay. It's a nice color. So putting that in the inner corner, kind of in towards, like, how are we going to know if we don't try it, I guess is the point. And there's no harm from this, especially when being at home. It's not like it's a risky behavior. It's a good choice. So it's kind of like with cooking, try flavors together, maybe pull a little bit out of the pot and try a little of a spice rather than ruining the whole soup. So I'm kind of doing the same positioning as the look that's on, I don't know if it's the, one of the social media that I, that you start with the blue and the Adriatic and then you end up in purple. Well, I'm not saying start as far as which layer comes first, but starting color wise from the inside out, it's the blue and the, so this one's, I would say almost more silvery. Like I don't, I'm still not sure. I haven't like taken the evaluation about how I feel this, but I like the idea of putting this here. I think it is really sticking more to where I, Put that base down, which is nice. Then how do you go about blending these? Like what is the blending color for mint frost into starlet? All right, let's step back. I feel like something about that opens the eye back up. I'm just gonna try to blend a little here. All right, it's blended. I don't know about how the transition is exactly. I feel like I'm putting a little bit of the mint frost over this, which gives it some sort of metallic aspect, if you will. And now I want to, I think I'm gonna use this brush to go continue in with the mint frost. Or do I want a smaller one? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. I seem to go to this one a lot, even though it's like, oh, it's got something on it. It's, it looks like a dark color, but it came off already. So mint frost to the inside inner corner. I can't tell if it's the lip gloss being uncomfortable on the eyes or eyelids or just the friction or from before I began. I don't know. So again, glad to be trying this while at home. Seems like a lot of people don't put a lot of shimmers underneath. I don't see why. This seems like it's working in my mind. Like, what's the problem? Am I getting as close to the lash line as I want? Uh, hard to tell. Because it feels like I got a lot of skin that's not covered, but I'm not trying to get it in the waterline here. Just up to the lash line. Could it be affected by the mascara being already on? Perhaps. I'm also not used to having like the color on the inside. Like it's usually always like the lightest. So that worked for the other look. Did I get something in my eye? I can't tell. Something's not so comfortable. I guess this could be a time for limoncello as well. Or no, I want I want to do dainty. Oh yes, dainty or duet. I think some guy in the eye. I'm just gonna have to try to blend it away. So dainty, I keep mixing up with duet because duet. It's kind of like this like lavender, but it looks, it looks so much like Dainty, but Dainty looks chunkier. So Dainty is like a lighter pink. I'm going to try doing that in the middle. And then looking really up. Did I have an idea for what I wanted the brow one? I guess Illusion is like the go-to because it looks white. but it's so sheer. But I would say it's helping contribute to the frostiness 
look, idea, concept. And I can feel under here, this is definitely far more grippy. You know, I wonder how this would work, the alight as the eyeshadow base. We'll forget where we left off, but I remember seeing, I think it was from the Circo something palette, like the light pink and light blue that kind of look like cotton candy. I would say this is close to that. Like the other may be more shimmers, the other one might be more matte, but there's something about this. I mean, in fact, I would say on camera, it's more cotton candy than in person, but the mint frost, I think I like it more on than in the pan. Normally, it'll do weird things with the background, but it doesn't take my face out with the background. But anyway, so, I mean, this could be done, I think. It's very kind of diffused. There's that look that she did, the very dramatic one with the kind of vinyl plastic that one thing was just blended into another. It's kind of like tie-dye. In fact, I would like to revisit those. Yes, yes, I would. But this has me liking the starlet even more. Glad I tried it. Glad I got to practice when things weren't as relevant to me, like going out. And we're back after a really long break, like maybe an hour to do a couple of things and talk to a couple of people. So I still want to try a few more things. I, you know, I have a few eyeliners like actively in process right now, but I have these and I want to try them. The question is which one? Like not the black because I, I've got ones close enough that are kind of purple. There's this like bronze and then this kind of red, dark red. Oh, burgundy. So, okay, it's brown. It's just here, it's like orange, metallic. So it looks bronze, but I guess it's just brown. And then burgundy, which is burgundy. So I think I had wanted to do burgundy. Well, this is packaged quite cute. It's a little sticker. cute. I think I'm going to go with the burgundy. So let's see how far this actually extends. Because it seems like it could be this, but it feels like it should be like that. Wait, is that it? Seriously? No way. That's, that's nothing. Is this stuck? I'll test the other ones. That is far less than I thought. Let's try the brown one. I, I you know one of these had some, oh my gosh, that's it? What are you supposed to do with that? That's like a sample. I, I vaguely remember, I guess when it's time that's not used up, I'll try really pushing it more to see if any more comes out. But I, I remember something saying there was less than expected, but I can't be sure if it was that or not, but that's very little. Like, is this gonna be the same situation? That's really very, very little. Like, what am I going to do with it? I'm not a little. I'm kind of sad. It feels like a bait and switch. And wait, why? Okay. And it's broken. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Well, at least I guess we, now we see how much actually comes out. But what do we do with this now? It was... It was pushed down. It's not like it. I had it up in the wrong way. So is this even going to work? I don't know. A little bit got in the... No, that's the lipstick. Hmm. All right. We're going to try this, see how it goes. I mean, it looks black to me. Thankfully, the lettering says burgundy, so I can tell. I'm not seeing the burgundy though. And this side, like where did the ink go? Let's go crazy with a wing. What is up with this not giving a dark line? Do 
I'm not loving it. Where is all the moisture in here? Are we supposed to shake it? Sounds like there's something in here to shake. Does it give directions? I don't see anything in here indicating to shake it. This is why I kind of just like using a paintbrush. Like you have more control and precision. Mm. It's of course picking up eyeshadow. Are these even? I mean, it's even enough for staying home, but. All right, so some, something is showing up. But when I push the side, it's not. What the heck? So the very tip seems to be kind of, but it's really faint. Like, and then pushing down a lot more and rolling, it has something, but you should, I don't think you should have to push down. Like, maybe this, maybe storing it like this. I don't know what to make of that. And then with such a strong wing, and there is like a bounciness when you push this back in, like, <clears throat> so I don't know if that re-moistens it. No. Okay, so when, when it's feathered, you can see kind of it being burgundy as opposed to more black. So I guess it's a little softer than black, but I guess now we're gonna try this. Okay, it's not even showing up. What is this? Uh, seriously? Like, this is hurting my hand. This would not work for the eye. Like, what is going on here? I can't put this in my eye. This this hurts my hand. My hand is a heck of a lot more resilient than skin of the eye. I do not know what to make of this. And it seems to be a different color. Like the liquid one is more purple. This one's more mauve, like a lip liner. This hurts for a lip liner. There, what am I supposed to do with this? This is terrible. It's not even, it's, I've never seen such a thing. And if I came anywhere close to that, I would expect to see that in a pencil. I'm kind of shocked. I, I guess I'm gonna try the brown. Double take eyeliner, liquid pencil. Okay, that shows up, so what the heck? What is this? And what do I do about it? All right, we're just gonna try lining the bottom a little bit. I don't even know which kind of shape I wanna go with. I just know I want to make sure it's not all the way in because that kind of closes things off. The eyelashes don't go all the way. It kind of just go, you don't even have to go. You, you can stop before the eyelashes stop. I think I'm gonna do a double line. But this is really still very draggy, but at least it's soft enough to. But it doesn't show up as well. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I mean, I guess that makes the eyes look kind of bigger. It's dragging so much. I don't know if it's strictly because of the eyeshadow or if it's because it's on skin that moves so much. And I'm having trouble getting it. Well, I'm having trouble disappearing, but it's funny. Teleportation is the superhero skill I usually prefer over invisibility, but I guess this is helping with visibility. I don't usually like to do the waterline. 
I'm not in the mood to do it, but I'm, you know, I'm having a decent time trying to get this sort of bottom wing because the skin gets a little tighter. But like what? I don't, I mean, we're, we don't, we don't pull our eyelids like this to make the skin taut enough. So <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about this. I just, I can't figure out what's going on with this. I mean, and why is it so little of an amount? And why does it feel like plastic on my hand? What if I take the other side? Oh, <laughs> okay. No, it's just as hard, if not harder. That hurts. This is like plastic. I mean, what is this like uses a dotting tool or something? Who's going to be able to do anything with this? Do you have to like heat it up first? Okay, literally nothing is showing up and that hurt my hand like a scratch. This is causing, you know, like when you scratch your skin and like the skin is like a little bit white because it's almost breaking. Can, can you see that? What is the point? What, what do we even do with this? I thought that they were known for their eyeliner. I thought because they like to do really big, thick wings, they, they were kind of good at that or whatever. All right, I want to make it even longer. No, one side. Thing is, I am kind of partial to like feathering things out. Okay, but this is not even. Where is the color? Like, is it somehow the eyeshadow that has clogged it or something? This is really not working for me. Now the question is, do I wanna add setting spray to try to moisturize it or I don't think witches make sense in this case. So I'm gonna try setting spray. Well, that just makes it like watercolors. Is there just like no ink in here? Oh, that got a little away. Well, at least even. I kind of want to try that graphic eyeliner people do, but people tend to do that more with this kind. But since I don't love this, maybe this is the kind to do it with. Let's try it. Could easily just do this with a paintbrush. I feel like I look like a, but look, look, look how choppy it is. At least the my efforts I feel happy about. And we're getting into face painting. <laughs> but that is that is a very choppy line. Not impressed. And the, the actual purple color is not bad. It's just the functionality of this thing is quite terrible. I guess I could try just blending that with, now if, if I try wiping this off with a paper towel, will that get off the eyeshadow? This is very strange. Can't tell how much ink is in there or not. It's not really working for me, but I do somewhat want to, well, now I kind of want to like waste a good eyeshadow so maybe i'll switch to the kind i'm not such a fan of dropping things here is the believe beauty eyeshadow that i was not such a fan of i mean look how bright this looks it is not at all like that in real life it is dark but let us try 
this brush I think is already in use. I'm gonna try that dark purple and try to kind of shade this, I guess you could say. It is actually a pretty close color, it seems. So it kind of works for the shading. Feels like it could use some more blending though. And we're getting flaking pieces all over dropping. Although what this is telling me, the fact that it's so close to that color, I could just use this as eyeliner and wet a brush and get the same color and effect. Interesting, no? So how do I want to blend this out? <clears throat> These two colors seem fairly similar, <coughs> the shiny ones, but I'm going to go with the lighter one to start and put this underneath. I did not have this in mind when I began. But here we are at midnight. And what's good about playing with a palette you don't love it's a good chance to try things and say, oh, wow, I hadn't tried that color next to that color before. That gives a different effect. Now I kind of want to try that darker one. No, 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 that's way too dark. That's like eyeliner dark. Well, I guess I could try it underneath. Halloween level. Villain on theater level. Th this eye seems like, like it's not as smooth of a line or maybe it's just the angle I had, but it is in real life. But look how like the eye is kind of flattened. A little bit raccoon. And all these pieces underneath. This is a good brush to dust it away. Thankfully, it is dusting away instead of sticking. Hmm. What's next? I find myself wondering, like, what other directions am I going to go with this? But I was thinking, what else can I use this for? Normally, I use cream makeup for old age makeup. But what if I tried this? I'm trying to think of what brush I normally would use because it's been kind of a while. But I kind of, I also feel like I need to stay. Wait a minute, am I using the right color in the right place? I feel like there's something that's backwards about what you expect. Oh, I remember. Yeah, okay, I'm doing that right. But look, this is a very light tan gray. And look how dark it comes out here. Normally we'd use like more of a skin colored brown. All right, so if I try this pink, what kind of color is that? Still pretty dark. And what about the skin color? Not light enough. I don't even think I have light enough colors right now. But what can I mix it with to make it creamy? 
maybe like a face lotion type thing. But does it even have to be creamy? What if I just put something creamy underneath? I don't know. I feel like I want to try this with powder anyway. Except what do I do about the lighter color? That's my only issue. I guess I could deal with that later. I could just do the dark colors now. This color that seems light was really dark. Okay, I'm remembering the wrinkles, the crow's feet. But I'm kind of forgetting some of how I did it. I like to work off a picture a lot of the time. I know that much. And it's, it's good when you can get the wrinkles in the spots that they actually show up. Although sometimes you really have to scrunch your face to try to get them. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm kicking up a lot of dust here, thinking of getting my palette and then working some cream into it. I decided to get some of my actual theater makeup plus some eye cream to try to mix in with the dark, eyeshadow and some very small brushes. Some of them are lip brushes that are similar to the chisel brushes we use. So we're experimenting unexpectedly. So I'm going to put some of this eye cream on the palette where I already have the dark powder. All right, I use that brush. Where's the other one I just put down? I think I will use this lip brush. I like the longer handle. So I've now got to like sweep the powder into the area of the cream. So it's not just all over, get it closer and then actually start mixing with the cream. But even my breath is blowing it around. And tapping it. So it's somewhat there. Now I'm testing out my hand. Okay, it's definitely like a gray. And I can make kind of a line, but it's also very faint. But because it's not as brown as I would like, <clears throat> so I kind of want to use some of this, even though it's shimmery. And I'm actually just going to use the back of this brush to scrape it a little bit. And the good thing is, if I scrape from the edges, that's the area that gets left behind. When you normally, you know, if I'm if I'm scraping I here, could you try? What is that talking? Um, when if I'm scraping here, that's the part that normally gets left behind when you, you know, I got some on my hand. When you're using the middle of the pen normally, so I'm now picking up what I scraped, plus some of it just fell in the palette anyway. And now it's a little different to try to scrape it towards that middle part because now. There's already that cream on the brush. Now I want to add a little more cream because it feels like it needs the moisture, but I'm also not trying to have it get too thin. Now this is looking pretty different than I normally have it. I, for some reason, can't seem to remember what color we used for the dark. Like I, there must've been some kind of brown. I don't know if we use straight up brown or if we mix it with foundation first. I probably have to see to try to remember. So now this is mixed. It doesn't look like there's very much, but it's some kind of dark. So we're gonna, we're gonna try it. All right, so we've got these wrinkles to add in. Periodically, I like to kind of do the old age makeup again, just to make sure I still got it, you know? So this is also showing, <coughs> apparently, this would make a decent eyeliner, I think. This is very dark. I, I'm trying to remember how we blended. I feel like the lines were not this long. So I guess we're just doing more of a placement video. It almost looks like some kind of cat something or other. Can't remember which way the light goes for these. I remember this thing about how, because the light comes from the top, you'd expect that the light color would go on top, but it's the opposite because 
the way the wrinkles go, most of them, the light shows up on the other side, like where it's coming out of the fold. But I think there are exceptions for certain types of wrinkles. I just can't remember what those are at the moment. I don't remember why we kind of shadow the nose. I just remember it being a thing. I, I feel like I just look like a kitty cat. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to make faces to get those wrinkles. <coughs> I don't remember there being a wrinkle here. <laughs> All right, I remember jowls. <coughs> Okay, I definitely remember this. This one my face makes anyway. I just don't remember which way the shadow goes. Shadow on the highlight is very important. Oh, maybe that's the one that's tricky because of the way the light goes and the blending needed. Yeah, blending is going to be an issue here. And I feel like the line needs to be thinner. And I'm going super thick. And then you have a wrinkler forehead to get the forehead lines in the right place. So that when they actually make their facial gestures, the wrinkles line up. Well, I guess this works in a pinch, but this is not ideal theater makeup. This is kind of like those apps that show you what you're like when you're old, except more pronounced. Well, not more pronounced, but without the issues. And there's also these other little lines, but you don't really emphasize these diagonal ones. I know I'm missing something. Oh, well, people, there's those lip lines. I just can't remember which way. The wrinkles go. These seem too straight like whiskers. It's not really working for me. And like, you have to tell the actor usually what kind of face to make to get the wrinkles, which I'm not remembering right now. I mean, I think you can kind of start to see it. Oh, there's gonna be some wrinkles. I know there's got, I mean, besides gels, there's something else here. But the thing is the gels don't go this way, they go this way. So why, I guess that's an option. Like where your skin, you can get to fold. I remember them coming up like under somehow, something like this. That seems about right, but then where's the highlight? And what else on the cheeks? Some of them go up on the cheek. I think some blending is needed. These lines are not great. We've got kind of the harshness on the other side. Mm, not the most ideal. We do need to add something in here.
Oh, that just got way too dark. So, okay, this is quite feline at this point. One thing I'm remembering that I left off the cheeks. And it's actually not far from what people do in contouring. I'm just trying to remember, do I kind of go shade up or down? Maybe this is that one that's a little bit different. Either way, I need to blend this a little. That's the problem with this situation. It's like, it's chunky. I think you blend down to kind of hollow out. Maybe this is the one where that rule doesn't apply about the light on the bottom. <clears throat> Which kind of brush do I want to blend it out with? Do I want to actually start using the powder as powder instead of in this mixture I've got going? Yeah, I'm gonna use this brush and go into that matte color that's so much darker than it seems. This seems like the shadow point that makes sense. That looks a little bit hollowed out. It's funny when you in the past have done this very well and effectively. I've had someone that the character was dying of cancer. So they had to look not just well, and they weren't even that old in the character. It was more sickly, but a lot of the same principles apply. But sometimes, like, so you're going to have, like, hollowed out cheeks, perhaps. Maybe not as many wrinkles. But then for the neck especially, which I can't even remember how I did. I remember you have to, have like, them clench their muscles and you kind of outline them. But some of it's going to look more sickly, like oranges and reds and yellows, rather than just sh shading. <clears throat> It seems, again, kind of like a harsher line. And it seems too smooth, too. Like, you might have it hollowed out, but you're not going to have it that smooth. I want to work on the blending, blending it up. So even though we've got this harsh line that's not a cream and might be a little difficult to move, we've got to blend it up. Even if that means possibly adding some more, but I feel like this is blending into the foundation somewhat. I'm now seeing the benefit of using actual cream. Well, I used to see the benefit, but I guess I forgot. Got this one hair that has the dark stuff collected on it. Wondering if I should just use. <clears throat> this brush, using the dry form of it, and just let that kind of blend. Yeah, because this is kind of producing harsh lines, which you need on one side, but the problem is, even though it's a sharp line, it's also got these chunks that are not really what you want. And I can't say that this blending is really that great. Although I do find going in with this brush is helping quite a bit. This is definitely a dramatic depiction.
I guess, you know, continuing to take shape. I don't remember wrinkle here, but <clears throat> kind of it kind of makes sense. I think there's something here. Can't seem to remember what. Maybe the move of the face to figure it out. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm remembering some things here, like these little lines. A little bit like the mouth lines. Oh, yeah. Okay. Little lines this way. There are lines that go this way, but that doesn't really make sense because it's not a face you make super often. Sometimes you'll get a second line here. I guess it would connect here. Let's just try it. We're just thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, <clears throat> that's a lot of lines. Like I, you know, there's different levels. Like there's certain wrinkles you put on first. Certainly these ones here, because you're making that face all the time, and then these. And then other ones kind of come later. Oh, yeah, and everything kind of connects up there, I remember. And time to blend. And there's something to be said for the blendability of powder, but I think the fact that we learn with cream makeup and that's what's known in the theater is a reason for it. Gotta move my hand to get my movement for the hour and apparently. It's kind of weird how it thinks I haven't stood up even if I've been walking around. The other thing is though, even if I'm blending this out a little peculiarly, once I add the highlight, that kind of crisps the bottom of this line back up as well. I did it. <clears throat> oh yeah, these, I think these are the nasal, nasal labial uh, folds. I don't know if I'm getting the powder up my nose or breathing it in, but something's making me cough. When I earlier used setting Sprite <clears throat> and accidentally inhaled it quite a bit more than I realized, that set off some coughing for sure. It's funny how it doesn't appear as noticeably dark here, and yet, I mean, the blendability works, but <clears throat> why does it seem so dark on the eyelids then? All right, I think it's time to go in. I think this is what we used, even though it doesn't seem like it's lighter than my skin, at least it's pressed. All right, so I've already used this. I could wash it off. I might even do that. Or I can use this other one, which is pretty similar, a little smaller. Cream feels thicker than it used to be. Could add some oil or just try this. I think we've gotten as blended as we're gonna get for the dark. I feel like I was just about to do something and I kind of forgot. <laughs> okay, so I know I used to like to start here for the highlight. Oh yeah, that is lighter. Oh, this brings back memory. Memories like the wrinkles under my eye. All those theater memories of the way we painted on age Mago. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. 
cream aspect. And it kind of just feathers out without even having to try too hard. And then if you felt like you didn't get enough feathering at the end, ta-da, that's basically it. Now this feels like it's kind of part of just the eyeliner and may not be a wrinkle, but let's see how it goes. Because there is a Natasha look that had that kind of inner something or other in the eyeliner situation. I mean, in the, yeah, in the eyeliner and <clears throat> eyeshadow. I do remember doing these next. Why am I disappearing? And just kind of using the side of that brush would do a, kind of a, enough blending where you didn't have to do much more. And it gave a bit of that chisel effect. I guess this is sort of informing me about which way the shadow goes. Sometimes it just kind of comes naturally, even if you think you're going to be confused, just like these. I miss my makeup teacher. I miss some of the elements of theater. Sometimes with these, it's as simple as just a little line. <clears throat> These lines are hard because it's like, wait, which side is it going in? You're a little confusing. Like, which? Yeah, I think it's these that are like, it's hard to remember which way they go. Where are we? All right, we've got the eyes. We need a little bit more crow's feet. Well, I guess I didn't put many lines in here. Oh, something here. I feel like these are more the eyeliner than the wrinkles. The second line needs something. I remember darkening this area, which is kind of like these days people lighten it. <clears throat> I've already got makeup there. I almost feel like some of these lines are too smooth and they don't even really look like old age. They just look like, what's that word? Zentangle or something. <laughs> but I just spent a few minutes like squishing my skin around to figure out the highlight again because the vertical lines don't really have an up and down. And so the dark goes in, cause like in is like up. So I need to kind of define that more. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. And again, I've got like this line, the hard edge ended up because of the way it was chunky, it ended up on the wrong side, which just kind of is confusing. So time for blending, but I can't really see what I'm doing all the way back there. 
<clears throat> and they do connect somewhat. It's like at the ends and some of the blending is good with the powder. And then, oh gosh, what about over here? That got a little out of control. And it's like, will it let me blend the stuff that I mixed in with the cream? Sometimes when I'm not talking, I'm like, I'm still recording, right? Wait a minute, am I on the right side? Oh, I think, okay, this one's the right side. The light is in the back side. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing. I also don't know how I used so much of this up. I wonder if this is the one from theater or if this was the newer one. Some of the ways that I blended this seem like they're in the wrong direction. Like it's just unclear where the hard line is. And then I don't really remember about the hot out cheek thing. I don't remember there being such hard lines there. Did I do the left side of the lip? Oh yeah, I guess it just soaked in. Oh, I just remembered <clears throat> the lips. We wouldn't have lips so youthful looking. <coughs> so I guess it's time to take some of the lip gloss off. We've still got the long wear lipstick on. I'm gonna switch to the foundation now, which is similar color. But I'm not seeing the wrinkles as much as I would like to. That helps a bit. Still kind of bright in the inside. And you just stick it on. It's funny, I don't love this smell. It's oil based, but it reminds me of theater. I feel a lot older now that the lips are taken care of. Like, Somehow that really added something, don't you think? Like, I just feel more frail. Like, mm. <laughs> although this is, although suddenly doing this, I'm like, what, what is that exactly? But yeah, I, I think it's still some of the lines are seeming kind of smooth. It's not giving the same effect as, and I think the eyes too. It's not giving the same, it's not giving the full effect that a stage would, but there's something. The lips helped change this a lot. And I feel like the eyes are throwing me off. 
So I want to try, I have to keep track of which brushes I'm using so I can wash them. Back to that color and kind of hollowing this out, like connecting this a little bit with this wrinkle. Getting this to look less pretty. I don't know if I need to go into a much darker color here. Is that helping? I think it is. And then the color above it. The darker one. I mean, I don't remember what happens if you try to get it into the eyebrows. This is the time to get the darker, darker one going. I should look at what I did when I turned myself into a male. That helps. I feel like I'll go a little bit more tired. My eyes itching. And then fix some kind of highlight here. Although, is that just for the eyebrow? I don't even know. I'm like losing track of my wrinkles, induced wrinkles. Oh, I forgot to put the extra mascara on for the final look of the other thing. I had it on from earlier. I just was going to redo it. Maybe hollowing. It's already pretty dark, but. Calling this out. Well, it's kind of hard to see where to put the highlight at this point. I also think with the cream, it's going to get a little lost. I don't really remember doing much on the eyelids to enhance these wrinkles. I just don't think the same rules apply. But I wonder what would happen if I put a highlight right under, well, that might look like kind of a fold where we normally wouldn't want it. That helps, I think. Hmm, still something a little bit feline. <clears throat> I know sometimes we would do these like hash mark wrinkle things, but that's like really, really wrinkly. Oh, I know. These. I can't, there's something about this I'm not remembering. But why could I see them a second ago and then I? Lost it. Oh, I think because yes, it's totally scrunched my eye. I almost feel like it's too smooth again. Definitely something though. I haven't dealt yet with the cheek. I don't think this is right, but I'm trying it because I don't think you'd have such a distinct line for the cheek. Maybe if you're a villain, but, and I think this is the one where it kind of gets into the shadow of this one. So you gotta be careful. Yeah, I don't think it'd be like a harsh line there unless you were going for like a chiseled jawline again of like a villain. But it's something. I feel like the lips, even though 
The lines felt a little fakeish before. Actually, look pretty good. The forehead, pretty good. Actually, I need to add. I feel like even though this wrinkle goes up high. All right, I was just going to do something. Oh, yeah. This wrinkle across needs a highlight. And does it need maybe a re? Bumping up of the duck. I think so. Hmm, yeah, I think that helps. There's something about this that I'm trying to remember if there are rules to it. Maybe, maybe that doesn't connect so strongly. Oh, I think part of it is having the wrinkle continue through it. The crisscrossing wrinkles are kind of their own difficult animal. I can't find my wrinkle. Where am I? Okay. Something here, perhaps? A little bit? You want? Mm. It's tough because you start to, that's what I think. I think that's why we do the shadow wrinkles first because it's kind of easy to lose track of them. Mm. Mm. I feel like this area is too plump and flush. Could do some of those like hash mark type wrinkles, but I feel like we're kind of approaching an ending point perhaps. I mean, I feel like you don't usually end up with hair like this with old age, but Like sometimes I can hide the edges a bit. Like I didn't do anything with the neck, so let's pretend this is a turtleneck. Mm -mm, I need an old lady, but my hair looks really healthy, like a lion's mane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. Why don't I just switch the hair to a more matronly style? I guess this works for something that really hasn't taken much effort. I feel like these stray hairs now really help. And I mean. This obviously is not like a glamorous old age person. So I somehow feel like maybe if I make the face and maybe if I like feel hunched over. Mm, yeah, that helps a little bit. Whoa, I need an Afghan because I'm cold, but I'm a little disheveled too. And I think I look partially old. Again, uh, I think from stage it'll work better. And, oh, you know, I think the eyeliner is throwing things off too. And that's probably part of it. Maybe I need some highlights in the bags and the eyes. That could be it as well. Oh, 
Oh, but this feels like it's highlighting the upper part. Well, I guess we'll see how it looks. Does that look baggy? Well, I'm trying to make the eyeliner a bag instead of a hat, like a enhancement. Sometimes we would draw on a separate bag. I guess we could try that. I mean. But also, like, who even looks like this anymore? I was looking at Russell Nelson. He's approaching, like, 100. He's barely got wrinkles. His wife's, like, 30 years younger, but her skin is surprisingly smooth. And she doesn't have that, I mean, maybe she's had a facelift, but, like, she doesn't, to me, she doesn't have that look of, like, you know. So, who knows? Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to look at some older picture because I feel like she had been a somewhat of a public figure but once she's become more public figure that would make more sense okay eh, I don't know at least it did something to the cheeks yeah okay that does seem a little bit baggy but the nose, something needs to be happening to the nose. Again, I can't fully remember all the placement. I don't think we're trying to make it look slimmer, but I just feel like something needs to be there. I've heard that noses and ears grow throughout our lives because it's cartilage. Oh, my nose is itching. I don't know, does that help? I feel like just putting these like little lines in could do something. The faces we have to make. I feel like it's a good exercise for the face. Yeah, now I feel like I'm just like, which kind of is the, I don't know, I'm just, I'm too smiley to like have it make sense, but. I guess it makes sense with that face. I figured I don't even look myself. Like I look like a one of the from the things from cats. And if we just added shadow, we must highlight. But again, you kind of lose track of the shadow. So it's kind of hard to place the highlight properly. Because it's just kind of like a little random. I can't really remember where the nose has to go. But at least I feel like that has kind of filled in some of the overly still plump stuff. I don't remember what I just did. I added more of the foundation because I feel like it was fading. And then I added powder to kind of set it and enhance it. I think that's primarily it. I took a couple pictures like this. I don't feel like doing anything with the neck because it'll get on the shirt and I'll just wash, be washing it off anyway. But at some point it might make sense. Like again, you have them clench their neck Sometimes you'd even actually like pull on the muscle, which is the same muscle that the massage therapist says to like do this to kind of massage yourself, but she doesn't like to do it because uh, she doesn't know how hard to go, but it's a lot of tension here. So like you do this and this, and there's all these different muscles. Um, 
but I would say this is, like, this is a success. I didn't do a ton under here either, but that's a thing. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> and, you know, at some point you got to say, all right, that's enough. I mean, a lot of times it's showtime or time to warm up with the cast. But in this case, it's not like an official ending point, but the video is pretty long. It started off in a very different direction. And somehow we ended up here. So at almost two in the morning, you know, when you get farther back, I think it looks maybe older. Ah, it really enhances it when you make the faces. You know, it could definitely be a crotchety kind of person, you know? Can you even believe this is the same person as the other videos? I mean, it's quite the face, huh? This doesn't look very friendly. And as a theater person, we spend time, well, I certainly did, making faces in the mirror and figuring out, all right, how to raise that eyebrow, how to raise that eyebrow, then that eyebrow. It, for some people, they can raise it totally equally. Like it's like this and then this. I feel like mine, this is like a what kind of look. And this is like a hmm kind of look. So they have like a different personality, I would say. And just learning. Okay, how do I wiggle my nose? How do I do like the bewitched nose wiggle? Which is more mouth, but like, how do you flare your nostrils? Oh yeah, I forgot I could put some red, kind of red here for some of the oldie stuff. How do you, you know, raise both eyebrows? How do you wiggle your ears? Kind of wiggles the scalp too. I don't know that anybody can really do this, but I will say I saw a video of Thomas Monson where I think he was just doing the usual this, but his ears were so big, it kind of looked like this was happening. So I think this could have like a dent in it, maybe something here, but overall we've achieved it. And maybe now we can soon shower and go to bed. So as usual, I wish that you have health and love and peace and may we be healthy longer and longer. So it takes us longer and longer to end up at this stage of life. And may we go in peace and love and understanding and empathy and kindness and love again. So until next time, thank you for playing and having fun. <sighs> and peace be with you.